So I thought I'd share a little project I've been working on for a little while now. This is a Schumacher MI5 1 tenth scale chassis. And you might notice that there's no drivetrain, standard drivetrain like you'd find in pretty much any remote control car. In fact, that's the old drivetrain. I've replaced it with something a little bit different. Here we have four independently driven wheels, each with their own motor. So I'll move the camera and I'll show you a closer look at that. So this is the back of the car. Um, you can see each motor is coupled to a wheel, each wheel directly driven. So there's no coupling whatsoever between one motor and one wheel to any, any others. So the interesting thing about this is that we can use an uh, electronic controller to control these wheels completely independently. So just behind this board there's a little Hall effect sensor next to the magnets of the motor and this connects into the controller and we can use that to create closed loop control to the motors. So this is the original Schumacher rear differential gear and I use this as a template to design couplings to connect the motors to the wheel. So down here we have some 3D printed stainless steel couplings and some stainless steel brackets to hold the motor on. And because this is a um, dog bone coupling it can freely move as well. Just take the suspension off here to show you. One of the problems I had is that the original axle was too long um, because the motors bring the couplings much further out. So what I did, I cut the axle shaft in half and I created a face halfway down each of the shafts so they fit together like that. And then what I did was take a stainless steel tube and that essentially holds couples them together like that and then that just fits in there so one of the parts I had to replace was this uh, rear suspension mount um, you can see that if I use this it would clash with the motors so what I did made a little prototype using a bit of aluminium and when I was happy with that, essentially redrew that in a CAD program and printed out the DXF design on a piece of paper, stuck it to a bit of carbon fiber and then cut out the carbon fiber using a Dremel. There's a similar thing in the front. This was the old front suspension mount. Again, it would clash with the motor. So, so this is a board I designed to be the brain of the car. Um, it's based on a STM 32F4 microcontroller. It's a 32-bit ARM Cortex M4 controller, and it's running at 168 megahertz. Um, here we have a MPU 6050 accelerometer gyroscope. So there's three-axis accelerometer and three-axis gyroscope. And apart from that, there's not really much else on the board. There's some transistors to drive the inputs into the ESCs, um, there's a radio input for the radio receiver, this just reads a standard RC radio um, and it gives out the same kind of signal, PPM signal to the ESCs, servo, um, this is a programming port, here we, we've got capability to talk to serial and I squared C, so this is a Bluetooth module I just send serial data back to a PC or a phone so you can get things like data logging and real-time telemetry. 
Um, here we've got some analog inputs that I'm not really doing anything with at the moment. And these are the feedback from the hall sensors. So there's four of those inputs in there. This is what the controller is based off of. Um, this is a STM32F4 discovery board and this thing is ridiculously cheap. It's something like 13, 14 pounds in, on Farnell in the UK and it's got loads and loads of features and it's fairly straightforward to use once you get used to it. There's loads of tutorials out there and any, any of you familiar with Arduino, this thing I think blows Arduino out of the water from how much it costs and the time it takes for you to get going with it, it's pretty good. Some of the things it has is uh, audio DAC, audio output, USB on the go, accelerometer and there's loads of I.O. and there's also a debugger and this is what I use to program my board. Um, it's just a simple case of plugging a header into there and removing these two jumpers and the program will talk to your board, external board instead of this chip, so pretty good. So apart from that there's not much else to it in terms of hardware, the rest of the car is stock, um, stock steering, stock suspension and normal body shell everything just fits on. So this is a Simulink model that I've designed as a differential, a software differential. Uh, it's fairly straightforward at the moment, it takes a steering value and a throttle value and depending on various coefficients it will give different amount of power to each wheel depending on how much you're steering. So there are a few things we can change here. We can change how much power goes to the front, how much power goes to the back, um, and how much slip between the front wheels and how much slip between the rear wheels. Now once you've designed this, um, you can actually, if you have the embedded um, coder add-on for Simulink, you can export this as C code. So once you've got it set up, it's simply a case of hitting build and your the model will just be spat out as a, a C file that you can include in your project. And so all the algorithms are taken care of. So I won't go into too much detail on how the code works, but um, I'll give you a quick overview on how I've laid it out. Um, there's a bunch of source files that controls the chip on on the controller board, um, control the analog inputs, uh, the motion sensors, the inputs from the radio, outputs of the servo and ESCs. Um, and then there's also a bunch of files that Simulink spits out with the control algorithms. Um, so it's simply a case of from your main file just calling the control algorithm and that takes care of all the maths behind driving each wheel and taking all the various bits of information and doing something with it. Um, there's also a config file uh, with various parameters you can change and change the behavior of the car in various settings. Um, this is what controls the differential, changes the different factors. The way I've got it set up at the moment uh, there's a bit more power going to the back of the car, the rear wheels and the front wheels, and the front. There's not much slip in the front; it's pretty much a lock differential. And uh, but the rear slip is uh, cranked way up. Um, and if you take this value beyond one, you're actually overreacting the differential. So this provides more differential than a mechanical differential would be able to provide. And what happens is if you take a sharp turn um, you drive the outer wheel extremely fast and the inner wheel you actually slow down um, you create negative torque so it breaks the wheel um, and you can get some interesting effects just changing these numbers you can change the behavior of the car feels completely different to drive and it's interesting what you can do so here I've got the car set up with a slightly more relaxed differential setting um, there's equal power going to the front and back of the car and the rear differential is about 0.9 at the moment so you can still plant quite a bit of power down and do some pretty ridiculous driving 
but when we turn it up the rear differential up again to 1.4 you'll see a big difference in how it handles so now you'll see the back really wants to pull out compared to the front even with a little bit of throttle the fact that the steering is in there it really puts a lot of biasing to each wheel quite fun actually so here I've got the car connector up to a debugger and so we can take a look at some of the values going on inside the controller once we pause the program this is the input from the RC radio so you can see a small throttle value here, 0 0.26 and a very basically zero steering value because I wasn't really steering this is the wheel speed as read with the Hall effect sensors and this is the signal being sent to each wheel um, to be driven now if we take a turn while accelerating we should see the differential working so here we can see the inner wheels MOT1 and MOT3 are going slower than the outer wheels which are MOT2 and MOT4 So if you're interested in having a look at the project, uh, the source code is available on uh, my GitHub page. Um, you can check out the firmware, all the code, um, the Simulink models, uh, the PCB and CAD designs, some STL files on various um, mechanical parts in the car, 3D printed parts. Um, there's a DXF file of the suspension mounts, uh, Gerber files for the PCB, and there's also a um, open source hardware park uh, a page where you can order a board, a blank board, and assemble it yourself. So it's still early days as far as the control system goes. Um, some of the next things I want to work on are creating closed loop controllers for all the wheels, um, using the accelerometer or gyroscope. Um, for example, use a gyroscope to correct oversteer or detect pitch and roll and adjust power to the wheels. Um, feel free to share any ideas, comments you may have. Um, definitely hop on over to the GitHub page and try out the code, download some of the parts if you're interested, um, have a look at the PCB design. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.